this is Anna Runyon from ClassyCareerGirl.com, and today in my networking challenge, I'm interviewing Diane Gottsman. Diane is a national etiquette expert and the owner of the Protocol School of Texas, and I'm really excited to get her etiquette tips today. So thanks so much, Diane, for being here. Thank you so much for having me. This will be a lot of fun. Yes, definitely. So I want to get started out. For someone who's just starting out in the workforce, what are some etiquette tips that you have for them? You know, if you're a new college grad and you are starting out on your first job or perhaps your second or third job, you know, this just doesn't apply to college grads, you want to make sure that you really do what it takes, which means that if your boss asks you to do something, you don't go and look at your job description and decide whether it's written in your job description before you say yes. You know, the answer first is yes and then do whatever it takes. That means if they ask you to run an errand, that uh, to go buy staplers at the local Office Smart, do it. Because everything you do is building on your own reputation. Definitely. Yeah, you always want to say yes, not no. Right, exactly. Definitely. That would be the kiss of death, okay, to be asked to do something. For example, this. You know, in my office, we have um, several different people doing several different things. But if somebody, if we go to our office kitchen and there's not any coffee, you're not going to say, oh, well, I don't make coffee. That's not in my job description. You know, it's, right. it's part of what we do. We're a small office. You know, larger offices might, might have different rules. But, you know, you just roll up your sleeves and pitch in. Be part of the team. Okay. So how can we become more polished in our presentation? Well, if you're talking about presentation skills, you know, in speeches, that's, that's one thing. If you're talking about becoming more polished across the board, because you can be a great speech maker, but if you don't have the credibility, you know, before you get to that speech, you've already have a strike against you. So I'm just going to talk about across the board how you can become more polished. And that's number one. You just, you want to be genuine. So every action that you take has to be an action that is truly you. But we can fine-tune what we do. So in other words, you can't, when you're communication-wise, when you are talking to someone, I want you to really be listening to them, not thinking about what you want to say because you look distracted. So you want it to present your best self. That means that you want to arrive to work and you want to look good. You don't want to come with wet hair and your your cup of oatmeal in your hand. It looks like you have poor time management skills. So everything you do speaks something about who you are. So you just want to really take pride in who you are. You want to appear confident. You want to make sure that you are communicating effectively. If your boss calls you to his or her office, don't arrive empty-handed. So what that means is if someone calls you in, you arrive with your, your pen or pencil, your pen or pencil, a notepad ready to take notes. You never want to say, oh, just a second, can, can I get back to get back to you? I gotta go get my notes, my notepad at my office. That's great. Because they're sitting there thinking, okay. <laughs> you know, it's a waste Why didn't of you time. bring that with? <laughs> yes, yes. No, that's a great tip. I, I I've definitely learned that too. So that's a good one to add. That's right. And, you know, so often we're nervous. We want to put our best foot forward, and we, we're we overthinking it. So, again, you know, you there are certain things that you can do, but at the same time you have to be who you are. So you have to, you have, to have a genuine look on your face. You know, if you're smiling nervously, there's a difference. There's differences in smiles. So if you're smiling and you're pensive and you've got your, your lips pursed or you look too controlled – it's everybody else's filter, you know, and everyone has a different filter based on how they see you. So when you smile, we want to see your teeth. Right. So we want to be able to count your, your top teeth, not because someone is counting your teeth, but because it's a more genuine smile. Your eyes need to crinkle. Your, your shoulders are up. You look confident. You look controlled. You know, if you're sitting down in a chair and you're leaning backwards and your, your arm is up here, you look, you either look confident or or you look lazy. You know, it depends on that other person's filter. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know if people realize how quickly people make those first impressions of you, you know, and their judgment may change. That's right. First impressions are hard to shake. You can do it, but it's easier to make a good first impression and not have to try and fix it later. Definitely. That's a good one. So I know many of us go out to meals and dinners with our coworkers and our bosses. 
What are your etiquette tips for meals? Well, you're not there to get full. <laughs> First and foremost, if your boss asks you to lunch, you're not there to load up. If you're at a networking event and going through the buffet line, you're not there carrying two plates and saying <laughs> one's for your friend or one's for your, your child and you don't even have a child. So, you know, it's very important to know that over a meal, you're still building relationships. This is a great opportunity to get to know someone better. So you don't want to order something so expensive that you look gluttonous, and you don't want to order something so tiny that you look nervous. So if your host, which could be your boss or it could be someone that invited you out, doesn't give you any cue, doesn't say, listen, this is wonderful, this is great, why don't you try this, then just order middle of the road. That way you look confident and you look you look composed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's so much to say about dining. This could be a whole, a whole interview on dining right. by itself. But it's really important to know just a few basic rules because if you don't understand the rules of the table, you you look yeah, I'm looking down because you're looking at your place setting and, and you look awkward and, and you look uncomfortable and this is what your client is seeing now if you're out with your colleagues that's another great way to build relationships so if someone asks you to go to lunch you don't want to consistently tell them no right. if everyone else is going to lunch you don't want to say well I, I brought my uh, TV dinner and I'm just going to nuke it in the office kitchen. You want to go out and you want to be, uh, you want to be around them because that's how you're building relationships and that's how people get to know who you are. Right. And it builds trust in the office too, I find, if I get to know someone outside of work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. So um, then what is your advice for communicating with your clients and colleagues? Like how can we better communicate with them? listen to them <laughs> you know that's a big that can be a big factor in whether your client is going to continue being your client you know it's not about your agenda it's about their agenda so when you're communicating with your client you want to make sure that you're on the same page and in terms of actually communicating with them you may be a texter and they may want to use email or they may prefer a telephone call. Mm -hmm. So when you establish this initial relationship with your client, ask them. Just say, you know, what is your preferred way to communicate? Because I want that's how I want to communicate with you. And let them lead the way. You know, if they text you, certainly you can respond back by text. But don't be the first one to text them. You know, let them guide you. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea, definitely, because we all have different ways of communicating best. Right, exactly. And, you know, if you are texting, and if and I'm not encouraging texting to be the, uh, the main form of communication because it should not be, or if you are emailing, every correspondence that you have with your client is still a professional correspondence. Mm -hmm. So, you know, be careful about your abbreviations. Be careful about your emoticons. Be careful how casual you are. Yeah, and in the beginning too it's nice to do that phone call just to develop that relationship. That's right. And even in between, even when you are emailing back and forth or if you are texting, it's still important to touch base personally every once in a while so they can hear your voice and you can hear their voice and you can establish, you can reestablish this relationship because you can't get someone's tone over an email. And, and don't don't forget that you you know occasionally you want to invite them to lunch if that's the relationship that you have if it's something that needs more than just a quick communication you want to be able to sit down you know and look at them face to face and get their feedback. Okay, so I just got this question the other day and it was about being friends with your coworkers and if there's like a limit on being too comfortable or too friendly with your coworkers, what would you say to that? That's one of the top five most commonly asked office questions. Yeah. In my opinion on that, and it's, I think it's very important to establish a relationship with your coworkers. And, you know, most of the time, that's where we, that's where we make our friends, you know, because we spend most of our time in the office. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, I think it's great to become friends and friendly with your coworkers. At the same time, it's a double-edged sword. 
because you have to still maintain a professional decorum in the office. So you have to be very careful. You know, you're going to use your best judgment. You're friendly and you can be, but you can't show, especially if you outrank them. And that's tricky. Now, if you want to be friends with your coworkers, that's one thing. If you are making friends with your supervisors and your boss, then your supervisor and your boss need to think very carefully, as do you, because you don't want to be seen as someone who's getting favors or being shown favoritism. But in terms of being friends with colleagues, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Just don't friend up with the office gossip. Mm-hmm. You know, because you, you, your mom used to say you're judged by the company you keep, and it's true. Yeah. You know, look at look at who you're hanging around with, and that says something about who you are. Yeah, definitely. That doesn't mean that you isolate yourself or you don't talk to a certain person because you have to maintain a professionalism across the board with your colleagues. Yeah. Well, that might be lead into my other question: is what are some other office etiquette mistakes that you see young professionals making? Well, I'm going to go back to what we first talked about, the job description. I can't tell you how many times supervisors and CEOs say to me, I'm having trouble with so-and-so because they come back and say it's not in their job description. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to restate that your job description is a guide. But just remember that your job description, you know, it should say all other duties as requested. So that's one thing. Another thing. Thing to remember is to make sure that you are part of a team and let the rest of your team know what's going on. No surprises, no surprises with your colleagues, and never surprise your boss. Mm-mm. You want to keep them posted every step of the way. If you have a client that you're having some difficulty with, if you have a client that's asking questions, you know, and don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, sometimes new employees are afraid to look for lack of a better word, stupid. And there is no such thing as a stupid question. Mm -hmm. So certainly ask questions because that's how you grow. Find a mentor, somebody who can help you along the way. You know, in terms of your actual office, when you're sitting around the board meeting table and you are there taking notes or you are there, you certainly want to make sure that you are being included in the conversation. If you have something to say, by all means, make sure that your voice is heard in a polished, professional way. Because if you just sit like this the whole time, that's what they thats what they see. They see someone who's nervous. But I'm going to show you something, Anna, that's mm-hmm. so important. I don't know if you can see it, but do you see my coffee cup, mm-hmm. my styrofoam cup? Do you see lipstick around the, the rim? I did this on purpose, by yes. the way. This is, this is something that you do not want to do. You don't want to take a coffee cup in or have a glass sitting at back to the meal with lipstick lipstick rings because it's it's unsightly and it's distracting so make sure that before you go into a board meeting this is something so simple yeah. or a staff meeting or to a meal just blot your lipstick so we don't have to look it's it's tiny little distractions mm-hmm. that make a difference yeah it's this this is this is something that should not be taken into a dining situation. Do you see my cell phone? Bad, bad judgment. Because when you're distracted by your cell phone, back to your question, what can, what can we do in the office? If you're looking at your cell phone, if you're just, if we are distracted by your text, your text tones going off, it says something about you. I may not verbalize it, but I'm thinking it. And it, that's how we form judgments about people. Yeah, it makes you feel not important if you're the one that's getting, you know, shafted by the phone. That's right. Even on a date. Okay, let's <laughs> say that, you know, corporate and social overlap. And, uh, you know, the same skills, I should say, overlap. And if you're out on a date and you are more interested in who is texting you or, or responding to a text than you are the person in front of you, you know, that says something. That means that you shouldn't be out on that date and vice versa. If they are looking down most of the time, you don't want to go out with them again either. No, definitely not. <laughs> so we offer dating advice too here. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so this is another question I ask at the end of all my interviews, and that's what is one thing you wish you would have known as a young professional woman just starting out in her career? There's so many things that we learn across, you know, we learn along the way. 
And I think it's so important to not be afraid to show, to ask questions, to show that you don't know. When you make a mistake, own it. Mm -hmm. Say, you know, I'm sorry, I, I messed up. And, you know, I take responsibility, but this was a learning curve. You know, I learned something from this. You know, my boss years ago, my, my mentor said to me when I asked him a question, you know, I would ask a lot of questions and he said, you know, Diane, at some point you just need to close your eyes and jump. Mm -hmm. And what it means is you're not, you're not, not responsible by just saying, okay, okay, I'm going to put my head in the sand. But sometimes you just have to take that risk. And if the risk doesn't pan out, Oh, well, it was a learning experience, but that's how you grow. You're mm -hmm. always learning. You know, you are never, ever too old to stop learning. You have to, at every level that you, you progress in your, the rung of your jobs, you need to be able to learn something new. When you stop having growing pains, it means you've stopped growing. So I think it's really important to just stretch yourself, step out of your comfort zone. And for me, that would be my advice is to step out of your comfort zone and do the things that don't feel comfortable, but do it because you're learning a new skill. Mm -hmm. Definitely. These interviews were something that wasn't comfortable for me, and I stepped out and did it, and I'm glad I did. So, I, And you've done a great job, so congratulations. Thank you. So where can people find out more about you online? I have a blog, www.dianegotsman.com. Dot com and then my website is www.protocolschooloftexas. Great. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for speaking with me today, Diane. Thanks so much. It was my pleasure. All right. This is Anna Runyon from ClassyCareerGirl.com.